Let's continue to learn about the graphic design principles. Today, we are taking a deeper look into another very important rule for designers, which is contrast. We'll see what contrast is, what it allows us to achieve, and most importantly, how to create that contrast in your designs using Canva. What is up everyone, Ronnie here, welcome back to the channel. Today I am pumped to talk about another very important graphic design principle, contrast, and we have a lot to cover. So let's jump right in and let's see what contrast really is. So here is a very simple definition. Contrast creates space and difference between elements in your design. So that is very important. We are trying to create a separation. We are trying to create space by having some differences, by creating some differentiation on your design in between the different elements. So that is in a nutshell what contrast is. Now let's have a look at what contrast allows us to achieve when correctly applied in a design. Now here is something you might have heard before when people talk about a design. They would say, oh I really like this design because it pops. Okay, or because the elements are really popping on the page. Usually when people say that a specific design pops, what they mean is that there is a high contrast between some of the elements on that design and the background. Okay, kind of like this image right here, where you see a darker background, like the orange gradient background, and the white or the light color popcorn kind of popping on the design, okay? All right, so contrast, design that pops. Here are a couple of examples of design with quite high contrast. And you can see now what I was referring to when I said that the design kind of pop, okay? They pop because they have bright colors and also pop because there is a high contrast between some of the elements and the background. So contrast is a very important design principle to first understand and second apply or respect when you're creating designs because it helps with readability, it helps with legibility, but also, and this is becoming increasingly important in the world of graphic design, it helps with accessibility. And that is because insufficient contrast can make content and particularly text content very difficult to read and that especially for people with visual impairment. So what I'm saying here is that learning about contrast and how to create, achieve that high contrast in your designs will allow you to create content that will be accessible to more people. That is a very good reason to keep watching the video. The second good reason to keep watching until the end is that I have a very special gift for all of you making it to the end of this video. I'm not gonna say more right now. I'll see you guys at the end of the video. Okay, all good, Ronnie, a gift at the end and I need to learn about contrast, but how? How do I achieve contrast in my designs? Let's put it like this. Creating contrast means creating differences between the elements of a design. And those differences that you create, this variety that you inject in the design will allow you to strategically put the emphasis on specific parts of the design or specific elements. So that's creating differences. But creating contrast also means combining opposites or elements with opposite characteristics on your design in order to create that differentiation, to create that variety, to create that space or that contrast on your design. So in other words, contrast just happens when two elements are in opposition with each other on your design. But enough talking, let's jump into Canva and let's have a look at some templates to see how good designers effectively use contrast in their design. And let's first have a look at how to create contrast with colors. So I'm going to be using these two templates right here to talk about contrast with colors. And these templates are part of Diana's template collection. Those of you who didn't know yet, Diana is a Canva creator. And therefore she designs a bunch of templates that are available on the Canva templates library. So for those of you who don't yet follow Diana as a creator, I urge you to follow her because she has literally thousands of great templates, okay? And I'm gonna leave you the link to her profile in the description of the video, so it's easy for you to find. So now back to the two examples right here. The first one I want to pay a couple of seconds analyzing is this one, okay? So we see contrast has been created on this template by adding some colorful elements on a neutral or on a light background. So the contrast with colors here is 
is a light background with some darker, colorful, vibrant element. Or it could be neutral versus vibrant because the colors are pretty vibrant in this example. So that's one way. Basically, we take opposite attributes, light and dark, or neutral and vibrant, and we combine them to create that separation. Remember? That's contrast. Next example, this one, it's basically the other way around. We have a darker background and we have lighter elements. Again, this works super well to put the emphasis on certain elements. Right here, the emphasis will be put on the lighter elements and particularly the photo of the lady right here because the background is light and she is also darker. So we have two applications of using contrast right here on the same template between the background and the color of the bubble right here, but also between the color of the bubble and the skin of the lady. All right, so this is a very good use of contrast to make things pop on the design to attract the attention of the viewers to specific elements. And guys, there is a tool which is amazing and free available on the Canva website to help you create this high contrast using colors, finding the colors that will work well together and create that high contrast. And that tool that I'm talking about is called the color wheel. Okay, I will have a link in the description as well to that specific page of the Canva website. But that's basically what the color wheel looks like. You see, it's called color wheel. Want to know what color look good together, well, Canva color wheel makes color combination easy. So what you want to do, you scroll down the page a little bit, you make sure if you want that contrasting color combo, make sure you are set right here, the box number two, choose a color combination, make sure you're set on complementary. Okay, so once you do, now what you will see here, the wheel will show you complementary colors, you see these two little dots, they will always be opposite to one another. You see one on top, one at the bottom. And when you turn one, the other one turns around with it. And right here, you see the colors. So pretty much what's happening here, the one color on the left is the exact opposite in terms of contrast from the one color on the right right here. So this is a really good tool to create that contrast. So pretty much pick a color like this purple right here, you are guaranteed that if you use that green, you will have the highest contrast possible. And what's cool also is that you can simply click here to copy the color code very easily. So super easy for you to find this high contrast with this color wheel. And you have other options right here that I'm not going to explore right now, but using complementary colors is basically finding colors on opposite sides of this color wheel. Remember, achieving contrast is all about combining elements that are opposites. Well, there you go. Here, these colors are on the opposite sides of the color wheel. All right, very good. That was creating contrast with colors and we've seen different ways of doing so. Now let's move on in the tutorial and let's see how to create contrast this time not with colors but with typography or type. When trying to create contrast with fonts or typography, we usually have three tools to work with. We can play around with weight, we can play around with size, or we can play around with the style of fonts we are using. Now, let's go back to Diana's templates and see some good examples of how to create contrast with fonts. Let's start with contrast creating by playing around with the weight of the fonts. I have three different examples to show you. Let's start with the first one. So this one right here, we can see that the contrast is kind of coming from two different ways. Contrast with colors between this orangey and white color and also the green color of the background. That's not what we are uh, trying to analyze on this one. What I want to show you here is the contrast between these two fonts right here that play on different weight. The weight of a font is its thickness. Is it thick or thin as a font, right? So we have a thin font, zero waste, combined with a thick font with the higher weight on the page, which is the routine. So zero waste routine. So this opposition between thin and thick creates that focal point on the design. So that's creating contrast to attract the eye to a specific group of element, I would say, on the design. Now let's jump over the second example, the second template. Here again, similar, we have win great prizes giveaway using a font with a higher weight 
here on the design than the rest of the text. So again, combination of thin and thick fonts, playing around with weight. And this one is the third example using exactly the same technique, playing around with thin and thick font just by using weight. So let me open a document in the Canva editor right here because I want to show you two different ways to actually create contrast by using different font weight. Okay, so that's what we are trying to achieve. I've showed you the templates, but you might be wondering, how can I myself apply this rule of playing with weight in a design? So two different ways, I would say. The first one is simply to use the bold button right here. If you bold a font or text box, you will achieve a thicker font. Okay, this will work with the majority of the fonts, but sometimes you will find a rare exception of a font that cannot be bolded. Okay, so that might happen. Just don't freak out if this happens. So the first way of playing around with weight is simply the bold button. Another thing you can do is to find a font family. So in this case, I'm going to uh, see what this font is. It's Montserrat and I'm going to open here semi bold. Okay, so if I type Montserrat, for example, right here, Montserrat. Montserrat is actually a font family. What I mean by family, I mean it's a group of fonts that will work together as a family. So Canva has different font families. It's a little bit of work to find them. It's kind of like a bit of trial and error, but Montserrat definitely is one. And Montserrat has six members in the font family. We have Montserrat, Montserrat Semi Bold, Montserrat Classic, Montserrat Thin, Montserrat Extra Bold and Montserrat Extra Light. So another easy way to play around, like to find opposites by playing with weight is to combine, for example, a Montserrat Extra Bold with a Montserrat Extra Light right here for this other font. And there you go, you have created that nice contrast between your two lines of text by choosing different fonts from the same family that have different weight attributes. So this is another way to play around with weight when you have fonts on your design. All right, let's move on. And let's see how while working with font or typography, you can achieve contrast this time, not playing with weight, but playing with size, okay? Once again, I have three different templates from Diana's collections to show you. The first one is this one. Okay, we see simply put like playing with large or tall letters combined with smaller, shorter letters. This works super well. Again, it's done on this other template right here. And not only have we played with size, but also with the style of the font in this one. We have like a more straight font, serious font combined with a more fantasy font. And then the last example is this one, Classes de Yoga. When you see like yoga is much larger, uh, taller font than classes day okay so we have this contrast created with the size of the letters the size of the font and i'm going to show you how to use different sizes on canva because it's super straightforward you just play with the text height the text size that's the one parameter you want to tweak to achieve these results and lastly, let's see some examples of contrast created by combining different font styles. The first template I would like to have a look at is this one right here, Ice Cream Parlor. And I'm not gonna focus on the contrast between the letters, this dark gray, and the pastel green background, the pistachio background. I'm not gonna talk about that, though I just did, but I'm gonna focus on the two different style of fonts that Diana has used here in the design. Ice cream, kind of like a handwritten type of font, and parlor, which is not a handwritten font, it kind of looks like a handwritten font, but it's a fantasy font, okay? So that's one example. Another example, this one right here, very different example. We have kind of a serious, kind of techy font, the smaller one. And then we have kind of like a book type of font, like a more elegant serif type of font. And they create a nice opposition, these two fonts. They work well together in opposition. We have the sans serif kind of futuristic font combined with a more classical, a more yeah book type of typography with serif with the book now. And then the last piece I want to show you today, this template right here, combining two different styles. And this time, I believe it is the same font, but with an effect applied. The hollow effect has been applied on some part of this sentence. And so we have like filled up letters 
and empty letters. So that creates an interesting contrast on the design as well. And you can achieve that by using one and only font on your design. But just by playing around with different text effects, you can achieve some very interesting contrasting effect on your design. And talking about font pairing, guys, there is this amazing article on Canva's website that helps us, that gives us a guide to pair fonts together. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's called Canva's Ultimate Guide to Font Pairing. And then we have a bunch of different suggestions on what fonts to use together, together with some visual prompts, some visual examples of these font combinations. So I will also include the link to this article in the description of the video. And yeah, I highly recommend you at least have a look, try a couple of these font combinations because it's not always easy to know what font to pair with one another. All right, we have covered a lot of ground, guys. And I told you at the beginning, if you stayed with me until the end, I would have a surprise for you. Well, this is the time for the surprise, okay? We have compiled all the templates that I showed you in this video together with the resources, the color wheel and the font pairing guide in a Canva presentation. And the good news is that you can access this presentation by scanning the QR code you see on this page. Okay, or if you are watching this video from your mobile phone and you cannot scan and watch at the same time, I will have a link to this presentation in the description of the video. I just want to make sure you have access to all of the resources I mentioned in the video. All right, guys, I had a lot of fun going over the templates and teaching you about contrast. I hope it was interesting for you. And if it was interesting, let's play a game. Like choose a finger on your hand, like choose a hand first, and then choose your favorite finger, and take that finger and smash the like button on the video because this will greatly help us here on YouTube. And it's kind of like you saying, thanks Ronnie for this nice video. And please know that we appreciate you. We appreciate your support on this channel. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, you should consider doing so because we have two new tutorials every week. One from me, one from Diana. And that's it for me. I will leave you with the link to the design principle playlist where you will find two other episodes just like this one, but about other design principles that you should also study about.